<coughs> Welcome back to another YouTube video. It is your girl Lin Wei, and there's absolutely no way without going through the way, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the way. <laughs> the SDS um, awards um, and like annual awards you know so that like, happens like, all the time um, and I've been part of student leadership since like first year and the reason I am taking this video is because I want to have a reminder to look back on at the amount of inspiration and really just the grasp of the knowledge that I, I took in in like that room today so as you can see like my face Hmm. I even had red lipstick on. That's why I look like this. Sure. And then this this was last minute makeup because I came from like clinical and then straight into um, the award ceremony. The reason I really wanted to attend the award ceremony was I, like this week alone or like this past two weeks or it's almost been three weeks now, uh, God has really been taking me on a journey to accepting my identity. And I think that it's a weird thing to say out loud <laughs> to accept your identity and um there was a keynote speaker very inspiring woman i forgot her name unfortunately because it was a very long name she's from malawi like she has a whole story that is just so brilliant like a story where you can see god's hand and she just each time she would mention like everything that was happening don't mind whatever's going on at the, at the back of my room guys like i left this room and then i came back just now so Anyway, back to the woman, like she had an incredible story and like her, her, her speech had so much footprints of Jesus and she obviously knowing like the demographic you're speaking to, knowing your audience is important and speaking to everyone, um, but still like ensuring that you are comfortable and your values are comfortable in your identity because not only like I like for example myself, like I'm a child of God and I get to lead people from different walks of life, I get to treat people from different walks of life in therapy and in just in general life. Uh, not everybody is going to be like a child of God, not everybody is going to be a believer. And all I have to do is model my Christianity to them and model my relationship with God because my relationship with God is going to show in the way that I interact with people. So back to like the title of today's video. So I was sitting there in that room full of student leaders, full of people that, because I saw the nomination um, <laughs> email, I saw it, I thought about nominating myself and I really thought about it, but then at the same time I was like something just like, I don't know what the deterrent was. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe it was just not the year that I was supposed to. I'm very happy for the people that got nominated, very happy for the people that won as well, because I'm really, really, really coming into this era, I would like to call, where I am just so comfortable with my identity. And I am so, I'm like, I'm really learning. I don't want to say I am comfortable already. I'm really learning. Like, I feel like now it's like, it's coming up so greatly. Like, and today was just a, a pick moment and it was like this week actually has been just a pick moment and a good defining time because I reach these moments every now and again um, in normal everyday circumstances where I'm like okay actually I'm really good at this <laughs> um, so I sat in that room filled with student leaders and this keynote speaker speaks about the imposter syndrome and when I'm sitting there she's talking about how um, you need to overcome the imposter syndrome and the imposter syndrome like looks like you maximizing your um, advantages and really like focusing on the things that you were good at and not only did she speak about that she spoke also about how you can um, start small but don't play small so don't now um, follow the pattern follow what you found already existing and I think that for the past two years in my leadership and just like in essence everything that I've done in terms of varsity leadership I have obviously tried to be as innovate, innovative as possible but there's obviously bounds that are going to come in your way and stand in your way and that usually just tends to happen because of just like things just 
the protocol just to take, to take the desire certain thing, but I don't think the world shifts for people that don't push the boundaries of what's normal, you know? And I sat in there and I was thinking about how much, like, that's that's the mindset I had in high school. That's, that's, that's the limb that wanted to change the world. And I still can. Like, in my head, I can change the world. And and when I think about changing the world, I don't think big. I think in the small little things, in the way I type up stuff, in my work ethic, in my presentation of myself, in my professionalism. It's in the little things. I think for me, it's beyond just um, the way I interact with a cleaner should be equivalent to the way I would interact with the director of the company because the value of a human being is not constituted by a position that they have. And I sat in the room and I realized that for the longest of time, even in student leadership, because like for example, in the debating union in the University of the Western Cape, I really was like, I came up and there's always something different about a leader. Like when you were a natural born leader, like myself, and that's, it sounds very arrogant for me to say that, but the truth is I've known this for the longest of time and people have made me feel so uncomfortable in knowing my identity and that, and my desire to be approved by people really, really dumped down and really, um, like, it it boxed my thinking, it boxed the way I did things, it limited my abilities and limited the identity that God given me. And I think like as as I, as I was speaking to one of the people that was nominated for um like an an award today, I told her that um I feel like not that I feel, I've known for a long time. Cause like I mean, if you grow your whole life and leadership just always ends up on your lap. Uh, clearly <laughs> you can't just assume like you worked it out like I used to think like I worked everything out like I used to think that I get in positions of leadership because I work hard you know and I do the work but the truth is quite often I like I don't go through normal protocol like I don't go through the work hard play hard type thing no 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 my side is literally god-given it's uh, a God-given gift that I am a natural-born leader. Like, God literally was like, this is, like, and this was just me, like, shooting this video, like I said, I want it to be a reminder to myself when in the next, I don't know, maybe next week, when somebody um, tries to undermine or, like, sort of, like, box me again in the narrative of, of things that I was living in and believing in, and those are not true like god really gave me leadership as my gift and i do believe that leadership can be a gift and is a gift because i always say this and i'll say this until the end of time i was not born to um i don't lead followers i lead leaders and the reason i always say that is because and i i say like i'd like it's it's in all of my speeches like if i get into any leadership position and like there's a speech my quote is always and will forever be, I am not here to lead leaders. I mean, I'm not here to lead followers or people to follow me. I am leading people to lead. And I don't know why, but that's just always been a stance. And the other one that I say right next to it, coupled up with that, to be a good leader, you need to be a good follower. Like, I will serve another person like it was my life, depending on it. And the reason I do that is because I believe that servanthood is really where true leadership, like humility is a big element of great leaders. And I have the privilege of doing that with Jesus. And I think that, um, yeah, yeah, it was very like interesting because like the, when, when she spoke about the imposter syndrome, the Lord just told me that, the biggest reason why you struggled with the imposter syndrome is because you f you took too long to grasp, not even grasp, accept your identity. So accept that you were called for certain things, like accept that you were called to lead, accept that you were called to change a nation, to change uh, policies, to change models, to change all of these things. Sometimes you think that your ideas are very 
like out of this world unrealistic but I feel that I serve an, a very impossible God and I've seen God do the impossible in people's lives all you need to do is dare to believe and I am really excited for this new phase in my life because not only did I notice this just in my area of leadership I noticed it in just the character of a person that I am. Like I'm really not, it's not even a hard working person. No, I'm diligent, I'm disciplined. I am committed, I commit to work. And when I commit to work, I will do the work with the most prestigious and effort that I can give to it with like, producing excellence. I really love excellence. And I learned that there's a difference between excellence and perfectionism. And because I'm straining away and breaking away from the spirit of perfectionism, I'm really accepting and living in the reality of what excellence feels like. Because excellence is not always 100%. Excellent might look like that 50% in your module. That is excellent work. Because when you read through the work, you will realize that in the nitty gritties, in the formatting of the document, in the borders that you put there, in the words that you use, in your dialect, and the keynote speaker said something that really touched me today. She said that um, even if you don't put a name on your assignment, the person that's reading it on the other side should be able to tell it to you. And I think that we all have a writing style. We all have a speaking style. We all have, like, it's that uniqueness that as children growing up, our biggest struggle is differentiating why this person is valued over the other person. And usually when we do that, that's where competition begins because like that's why I don't agree with certain aspects of the school system because we are taught to like compete and compare and not necessarily embrace and um, discover yourself and I think that I've entered into that phase in my life where God has taken me to a deeper journey of discovery a deeper journey of understanding of who Lynn is Lynn is just is not just um a very hardworking girl or like <laughs> you know I don't like the word hardworking because I'm really not hardworking I'm just diligent I'm just disciplined and that's just the truth and it came with me persistently pursuing the desire to be excellent certain aspects came with me having to go to war with the enemy to fight the spirit of perfectionism to realize that I have like uh, a desire to excel in things. I have a desire to lead people. I have a desire to see people change. I have a desire to see communities transformed. And these are things that I've been discovering in my journey. And I want to take you guys along the journey with me. This is probably going to be part of Big Sis advice as well as Holy Perspective because I do think that this is something that somebody needed to hear. And just embrace your identity embrace who you are you don't need to be the same as the person that you aspire to be you don't need to look the same do the same things there's something that you bring to the table that the next person doesn't and i needed to see that in myself because for a long time i had to shrink back and really let other people flourish and shine and I realize that the people that I actually love and adore, they live their life freely and animated. Like there's a scripture in Galatians 5, verse 16 to 18 in um, the message version. It says that my counsel is this, live freely, animated and motivated by God's spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness these two ways of life are contrary to each other so that you cannot live at times one way at a times another way according to how you feel at any given day why don't you choose to be led by the spirit and so escape the erratic compulsive compulsions of a law dominated existence and the scripture really is a freeing scripture because it just tells you how the spirit and the flesh are always at war and selfishness like i feel like when it comes to um 
the whole comparing yourself to another person is very selfish because it leads you to thinking that you are not enough it leads you to disregarding who god says you are and just yeah like i feel like there's so much more to say and next year expect my podcast it's coming soon so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video you can give it a thumbs up um and if you like such videos like this like little mini big sister advice or like my spare of the moment videos i'm not going to edit this video because i'm too lazy but <laughs> i'm probably just gonna like post it the way it is because i'm too lazy but like yeah i hope this video really meant as much as it means to me to you the information that i was impacting onto you and just grasp all of it don't forget to like comment share and subscribe you can follow me on my instagram tiktok and yeah that's gonna be on the, in the description and it's also gonna be on the side and by the way we're on 100 subscribers i am gonna make a quick short video of me thanking my subscribers but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'm gonna see you in another video of the deal of the deal